Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. My name is Mark Gengrass, and today we're going to talk about machine learning, but first we're going to talk about a concept called cross-validation. Before we get into it, please, if you are interested in more tutorials from me, subscribe, like, and share this post. I really appreciate that, and thanks everyone that's already been doing that. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so what I have is, in fact, um, I'm going to give you a demonstration on the on the uh, whiteboard first, and this will be one tutorial just on the whiteboard. So what I want to do is talk about cross validation or CV. You might hear it. You've probably heard of people talk about um, k-fold cross validation. That's what we're going to learn about right now. So cross validation and the k is the number of folds. Now, like what's a fold? So k-fold cross validation. Those are the terms you might hear when you talk about cross validation. What is it though, right? <clears throat> so you've probably also heard that if you have data, you wanna separate it out into a training set and a test set, sometimes a validation set, right? So let's visualize this and then I'll walk you through what's going on. So if this is our data here, this is all of our data in this little box, there's however much data we have. Picture these as basically rows of data, right? So if we wanna make a training algorithm that's going to predict the future or predict new data that's never been uh, seen before. You know, we we might want to leave some of these out so that later on we can check and see if it's making a good prediction. So let's do that now. I'm going to cut this data right here, and I'm going to call this upper half 75% of the data, and this is 25% of the data. Now it's arbitrary how I cut that, right? I could have done 80, 20. I could have done any any number of different ways. But let's start with 75-25, right? This 75% of the data is what you have access to. This 25%, pretend that you cannot see it. This is gone, right? So you want to train an algorithm. Now, a machine learning algorithm. That could be cross, that could be, um, you know, support vector machine. It could be logistic regression. It could be k-means clustering. It could be anything, right? So I want to classify. Basically, if I get new data, I want to be able to classify it and see if I classified it correctly or not. How do I measure something like that? Well, cross-validation. So that being said, let's um, do a couple, I guess, scenarios here. So you have 25% data that you do not train on. So you create this awesome algorithm. Let's say that um, at the end of the day, you have a couple of different, I wish I had different colors, but you have a cluster of data here and a cluster of data over here. And some machine learning algorithm said, hey, I'm gonna put a boundary around this and a boundary around that so when you have certain features because whatever these features are across this data so the features could be anything it could be random like um, do you have a feature called um, exercise right do you exercise a lot uh, food habits um, a history of heart disease so history and then you have some sort of answer that you're getting to, right? I have all these different features. I have a lot of different features in this data and I'm trying to get to an answer. Well, I know the answer for 100% of this data. Now, I'm only going to show 75% of the data though. Let's not forget that. Now, the answer here would be, are you vulnerable for a heart attack, right? Yes or no? It's a Boolean. Yes, you are. No, you're not. So picture these two dots as basically the answer. And it takes all of these features. It could be hundreds of features. And it tries to figure out what's the best way to cluster these so that I'm correct every time. Well, when you just use that training set, it thinks this training set is the only data in the world, and it can train on any algorithm to be pretty damn good like this. Fine, it's seen this data. Of course it can do this, right? It's a computer. It can get as precise as we want. However, now we take that 25% and we say, okay, on this training algorithm, we'll call it big A1, the first algorithm we come up with that did this, it said, hey, Yes, you're vulnerable. No, you're not, right? Run that algorithm. Run that algorithm on this 25% of data, which is probably different from this data, right? It's probably very different. It's somewhat similar, I would think. But now that 25%, as it plugs those dots in, you might get some errors. And you can count how many times did you get it correct? How many times did you get it wrong? And that's the point. So let's say on this first pass with this 25%, Let's, let's call this whole thing uh, 100 observations, right? So 25 observations. Of 25 observations that it's never seen before, it correctly classified, 
you know, correct would equal maybe 20, and then incorrect would equal five. So you can get a measure of success. Hey, I trained on this data, and here is my correct and my incorrect results. Now, cross-validation. So what that means is, I don't always use the 25% down here because what if that 25% was just a particular special case that happened to be near each other in this data set, right? So what you do is you, you, you cut this up into pieces and you run this training algorithm on every single piece, leaving one piece out, one fold out. This time I happen to leave this fold out, right? So I run algorithm number two, so algorithm two, where I don't use this piece, but I am gonna use this piece of data for my train and algorithm. So algorithm two, run it on all this data it knows, draw the boundaries, do the clustering, yes and no heart disease, then take this particular data that was out, take this, and this is where you would choose um, another set of correct and incorrect answers. So you'd have correct equals maybe 21 and incorrect is equal to four, right? So doing better. Repeat that over and over again, right? So you have multiple times. And then what you can do is each algorithm, which could be a very similar algorithm, it could be a variation of a support vector machine. What's a support vector machine? Nobody knows yet, but it's a machine learning algorithm I chose and it's gonna draw these boundaries. Whatever algorithm draws these boundaries, I tested it out on, I tested it out on, and got these results over and over again with different pieces that I get to train it on and test it on. And you can basically say, possibly, the best algorithm, maybe you have an algorithm three that has the correct answer equals 24 and incorrect only once, right? So if that's the case, that's probably a pretty good indicator that you know, this is a pretty good algorithm, or that chunk happens to just fit the training data and every other chunk won't. So, you know, I doubt that's the case, but it could be the case, you don't know. These are the things that you have to worry about when you're doing machine learning algorithms, these trade-offs. You have all kinds of trade-offs. Do you wanna be very strict and not get any wrong, but then when you get your test data that you haven't seen, you get a bunch wrong, or do you wanna be loose and kinda, of, you know, why, why is there a gap there? Why couldn't I close those in, right? Be a little looser in your interpretation and you can be correct more, maybe, when it comes to test data. Because if there was a point right here in the middle, the algorithm's gonna get confused. Now, it'll probably decide it's gonna be this one or that one inside of these bubbles, right? Because the training algorithm, the algorithm, if that boundary was the algorithm, doesn't know how to handle those. It just doesn't, right? So they'd be wrong, they'd be incorrect. They'd be an incorrect. So anyways, that's what it is. Now, cross-validation can get a little more uh, crazy because you can do something called the leave one out method. So leave one out is basically, you can call it leave one out cross validation, right? So if you have a hundred pieces of data, every single hundred of them all the way through, you would do this algorithm and training on 100 or 99 100 cases, I don't know, minus one errors all the time, right, programming. But so basically you would just say, hey, don't use this one, but train on all of this, train on this, test on that. Then the next one would be, don't use this one, but train on everything else. And you do that essentially 100 times. And you get the, you can get an average, you can use the best one, it doesn't matter. Because really, when you get to use data beyond what you have here, that's your true, true test to see if it's working, regardless of how you split this up. Now, there are some people that split up data like this. They'll say, um, we're going to do, you know, 70% training data, uh, maybe 15%, not my percentage is up, so that'd be 70, 85, and then 15% uh, test, true test, or validation, I'm sorry. So it'd be V-A-L-I-D, validation, test, and training right? So TR, <laughs> training, test, and then finally validate that. So this is truly never seen until the very end. If you're running like a contest, like a Kaggle contest or some sort of data um, contest, you would get the training set and you can t break up that training set between uh, training and test. Well, you'd get the, the, the data set. You'd break it up between training and test. You'd do all of the things to try to make sure that that test result, no matter which 
test section you choose within your, your data set, you would try to make that um, work as best you can. But ultimately, there's data that somebody stored that you never even seen, you couldn't even train, you couldn't even test it against it ever. Finally, when you get your final algorithm out, you send it over to the Kaggle or whatever, they run data that you've never even seen before ever, and they give you a true result. So that's pretty much how, how uh, cross-validation works. There's many ways to measure success. It's pretty intuitive and simple to understand. I hope that this will give you the basis for our next tutorial, which will actually split up a data set into training and test, and we'll do some uh, cross-validation after we do some machine learning algorithms. If you enjoy these tutorials and you want to learn more R, please subscribe, uh, hit the Discord button, and join us on Discord. It's starting to grow, that community. And uh, ultimately, every single time you share this on social media, you're helping me out. Uh, my goal, obviously, I think people know by now, is probably to get monetized. I'm getting closer and closer every day. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of results that will lead and how motivational that will be when I'm, when I'm done. So anyways, thanks for everything, and I'll see you in the next video.